Welcome back to the channel and my beautiful winter wonderland. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding here. I just wanted to do a uh, quick video about my uh, experience with Hankook winter tires. This is the first time in my history of driving that I've ever purchased a dedicated set of winter tires. And I went tiny tire style for winter because, well, it's supposedly better. So that's factory size. It's like a 31 inch tire. So I lost six inches over a month. What? No, but um, so I bought the Hankook iPike rw 11s and i have to be honest they are the worst driving tire in snowy conditions i have ever driven on and i have driven on a lot of tires and i have driven on a lot of bad tires but these these are next level bad on on ice they are oh i don't want to say okay they they can handle themselves but on any compacted snow or any sort of snow on the ground, they're absolutely trash. They just, they pack up with snow. You get zero traction. There's zero lateral stability. Like you'll be driving and all of a sudden you'll hit a little bit of a, um, I don't want to call it a rut because it's not really a rut on the road, but for lack of better words, it's kind of a rut. And you just start skating all over the place. So they are terrifying. And like I said, it's my first time buying a dedicated set of winter tires. I've had... I ran um, Goodyear Dirt Tracks last year. You remember on my my power wagon, I had the um, the Dirt Tracks, and they were a great tire. They were great in the snow, you know, compared to what these are, and they weren't even a dedicated tire. These disappointment, man. But um, let me jump into the truck and finish talking to you because it's minus ten and it's bloody cold. So let me let me get in the truck here real quick. All right, okay, I'm back. It is bloody cold out there. It's minus 10. I think you can probably see that. It's minus 10 out there. But um, yeah, what I was trying to say was just, I'm just disappointed. You spend a small fortune on tires thinking they're going to be good. And um, frankly, I should have left my other tires and wheels on. But um, I switched these tires over, had them put on, and I had an extra set of tires in the back of my truck. And somebody decided they needed those tires more than I did, and they took them sometime throughout the night. Whatever, my fault, I shouldn't have left tires in there. Well, lo and behold, the other day, somebody was stuck in front of my house, and of course, me being an off-road guy, I always have recovery straps on hand. So I grabbed my recovery strap, I pulled them out, and I threw the straps in the back of my truck, and my kids and I went about our day, and later on that day, I went to bring the kids sledding, and I grabbed the sleds out of the back of the truck, and all of my recovery gear is gone. I had a bag of straps, literally $2,000 worth of recovery straps and soft shackles and snatch blocks gone. Um, my portable air compressor gone, um, little folding shovel gone. They took everything. Like they, they literally took everything out of the back of the truck. So my assumption is it's probably somebody that knew me and the fact that I am, you know, an off-road recovery guy always going out helping people so they recognize the truck recognize hey there's maybe some good stuff in there and they stole it but I don't want to rant about that I'm not trying to make a, a pity me video I just wanted to get that out there you won't see me doing any recovery videos in the near future here for two reasons one because of my tiny tires they are absolutely trash in all types of snow like I mentioned and two all of my stuff is gone now I've got to replace it and finding any sort of inventory on anything right now as you guys are probably aware is next to impossible but uh, with that trash out of the way we're gonna head down to the dealership here I'm gonna look at buying something that uh, I like and I don't like but I think it'll fit my family's needs and the needs for what we want in an off-road vehicle quite well so so with that little rant about my tires being said and what my plans are for another vehicle, let's head down to the car lot and see what we can get into. All right, so I just rolled in and I'm pretty sure you can see off to my side there the uh, type of dealership we are in. So what I came to look at is the uh, Lime Green Gladiator. So it's, it's much more money than I want to spend, but I figured it's worth having a conversation with the salesman to see if we can't make a deal. So let me get out there and have a look. I gotta say, seeing the color in person, I really dig that color. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, 
heck of a unit. But uh, it's a 2021 for nearly $80,000. But it is the Mojave. The color is sick. And it's already got uh, some decent tires. So I'm, um, I'm thinking this might be the thing to do. So um, let me go in and chat with the salesman and we'll see what happens here. Well, that was kind of a waste of time. So literally they're not willing to even move a penny and no extras, nothing. Um, and, and frankly, after you know really thinking about it, I think the Rubicon is gonna be the way to go for me. I think I'm gonna just look for a Rubicon as opposed to the Mojave that's more of like a pre-runner type thing. So, um, yeah, and I'm not sure, like, the more I think about it, I, I, I want to go new because I want to get the warranty, but do I really care about warranty? Because most of what I'm going to do to it anyways is going to avoid that. So, um, yeah, I think I might uh, maybe hit up some private sales and see. Because I, I did happen to notice there was a 20, I think it was a 2018 um, listed for about 40 grand, but, um, it had a little bit higher kilometers, but, um, yeah, I really liked that color. I mean, that was, that was, it's so cool, but I, I suppose I could always wrap it. I'm not, uh, color doesn't really matter to me. I just thought, whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, with that being said, I'm going to end this video here because, well, I'm disappointed and, you know, be almost $100,000 after tax to buy something that uh, I'm going to end up spending a ton of money on. So I'm better off buy the Rubicon. It's got lockers. It's got sway bar disconnect. It's just built better out of the box. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be on the hunt for a Rubicon Gladiator. So we're going to be on the hunt for a Gladiator Rubicon. So if you know where there's one in Canada, close to me, hit me up, hit me up on Instagram, the real street stomper. And, um, we'll take it from there so until then much love. We'll see you on the next one.